Hi everybody, it's Katie Jo. And we're all here on quarantine, aren't we? Self-isolation. One of the questions that I get asked a lot about is how to make drumsticks. And so while many of you see my drums, I make lots of drums, the drumsticks are one of my favorite things to do. So I wanted to show you a little bit about how that works. As you can see, I have a stick. Now the length of this stick is about 18 inches. Some people do one foot, but I think that 18 inches or 16 inches is better. And as you can see about the size of that, this is probably the diameter of a nickel. Um, a quarter tends to be a little bit too thick. And you can see that I've cut this down. And this is an apricot branch. Um, every single tree means something different. Um, every has a different spiritual meaning. So as you can see on the edge, we have these little things. Now, you don't have to cut those off down towards where your hand will be, but at the top, if you're using this to beat a drum, over time you could actually puncture a hole in the drum. So you're gonna see that I'm gonna take those off and I just use a handy dandy little X-Acto knife like that. And you want it to be really smooth here at the top. Let's see, let's see. So as you can see, it's that simple. And now don't look at this part, I'm showing you this. Another thing that I like to do is I like to, at the very top of it, make what I call fish scales. I think I got that term from somebody else. But I find that unless there's a little friction, just like that, at the end, over time, the drumstick's gonna come off. So I do that. Take a little bit of wood glue and you just need the teeniest little dab. You don't want a lot. You don't want it wet. Oh, if I can get it out. So I have now friction and just a tiny little wood glue. You know, when I have run out of wood glue or um, other glues, I'll literally use um, nail polish. It has to just be something that when it dries, it will be firm. This is the secret. People think, Often I get asked what's on the end, just that. And do you see this? If any of your moms or grandmas taught you how to sew or crochet, they probably taught you how to make one of these. And it's as simple as this. We're almost done, believe it or not, this is how fast it is. I can hear my little baby crying in the background. I usually only have a few minutes at a time. <laughs> <laughs> you guys all know how newborn babies are. What are some of the things that you're doing during this quarantine? What are some of the things that you're excited about or crafts you're making? And as you can see, I just continue to wrap this around and around and around. And I would keep going all the way around to make sure that there's not hard edges like that. You don't want any of that. But for now, just in it, for time, I'm going to stop. So once you have this, the tighter you weave, the harder it's gonna be, and the softer you weave, it's actually going to be um, gushy or like softer and have a softer tone. And so you just do it to what sound you feel like you're going to like. I like this to be fairly firm. If you go too soft, what's gonna happen is it's going to fly off. It's just gonna pop off or unravel. So once you have your end done, there's different ends you can do. This is actually, um, wool. I love to crochet. My grandma taught me to crochet. If you're out there and you want to crochet, I hand make those. This is suede. This is just a little pouch that I've made out of suede. But one of the things that makes the best tone, and people always like the leather because it's a drum and it's handmade, but is cotton and a little cotton square. And if you can see, this is about mm, smaller than a piece of paper. Maybe it's eight inch by eight inch, and that's enough. You'll take this, put it over the end, just like this. You can use yarn or this. This is imitation sinew. And I will take that and simply wrap it around here, just like this, as tight as I can and tie it. 
So you can see there's a little bit of trimming to go and I didn't really finish the end so I'm not going to finish it in front of you. But that's the basics of making your own drumsticks. After that, of course, you'll want to carve it, embellish it, do feathers or ribbon and make it really your own, a partner to your drum, a partner to the spiritual meaning that your drum has. So. Um, feel free to share this with kids. This is a really easy thing for kids to do aside from this, which you might want to do yourself if you're a grown up, but I love drumsticks. I go out and find them the same way that people find spirit staffs or shaman staffs. So happy drumming, make your own personalized drumstick. Have a great day.